Okay, th uh, thanks, Jeff, and, uh, and good evening, uh, everybody. Um, I'm really very, very grateful to the NECC for the opportunity to join you all here tonight. It's, I have to say, such a fantastic event, and for the chance to talk a, a little bit about what we're up to at Sky. Uh, for me, it's always, it's always good to come home. Uh, I have to confess that it took me quite some time uh, to leave in the first place. In fact, it wasn't until I went to university at 18 that I first went down south uh, all the way to sunny Hull. So, uh, Sir Ranulph definitely wins hands down in the travel and adventure stakes uh, tonight. And when I graduated from university, I came back here for the formative years of my career, first to qualify as a chartered accountant, and then to work at Procter & Gamble, who at the time were based just up the road in Gosforth. Now, these days I come back to Newcastle less often than I'd like, but when I do get back, I'm always struck by some change or other, sometimes small, sometimes big. And it's really great, I think, to see the, how the city has developed and it continues to develop so well over time. You know, that ability to adapt, change and renew, which Newcastle has demonstrated particularly well, is of course a characteristic of all successful cities. And it will be, never be more critical, I think, in the immediate years ahead. And it's just as critical in business as well. In today, indeed, in today's fast-paced world, it's often said, quite rightly, I think, that change is the new status quo. So if you feel like you're standing still, the reality is you're probably going backwards, and that's rarely a good thing in any walk of life. To be successful over the long term in today's challenging environments, companies need a strong sense of purpose. They need a desire for constant improvement and an appetite to make things happen, to convert good intention into results for progress, if you like. Now, these are the kind of companies that I, I call change companies. P&G is one such company. I was lucky enough to be there for 12 years, and much of what I learned in those early days has stayed with me, and I still draw on my experiences today. There can be, I think, few better examples of perpetual improvement than a business that's grown from selling soap up the Ohio River to one selling a vast range of products in pretty much every country in the world. I also count my own company, Sky, as a change company. And so tonight, what I'd like to do is use my time not just to bang the drum about Sky, but instead to use it as an example while talking more broadly about three things. What being a change company really means, about what it takes to create one, and about the benefits they bring, not just to themselves, but to the wider society in which they operate. Let me start by explaining why Sky is a company built around change. Well, when we first began, a couple of decades ago, Sky was a revolution in the world of television. Now, that might seem hard to believe today, in this age of almost infinite choice, but as Jeff said, if you cast your mind back to 1989, the world was a different place. Now, it's painful for at least some of us in this room, I know, given that Newcastle got relegated that year, so we won't dwell on that. Instead, what we'll do is we'll think about the choice in television back then. A paltry total of just four channels, a handful of news bulletins at fixed times, a film once in a while, and every so often a bit of live sport. Even then, it was all a bit half-hearted. It seems incredible today, but there was an occasion where just one half of an England football match was shown live, the other half making way for neighbours, of all things. Well, Sky's founding principle was that consumers deserve better, better choice, better quality, and that they would be prepared to pay for it. The media establishment, of course, favoured the status quo, and they thought that Sky's backers had lost the plot. And it wasn't just the sniggers uh, that our investors had to deal with. There were huge financial risks too. In fact, the company was losing £40 million a week at one point in the early days. But we kept the faith. Customers started to respond in ever greater numbers. The red ink eventually turned black. And the rest, you might think, was history. Except, of course, it's never really quite as simple as all that. Having one powerful idea, plus the nerve to put your money where, where your mouth is, is really not enough to sustain success over two decades. Sky's successful today because we've embraced change 
and we've repeatedly reinvented our business and we will continue to do so. And the reason is really pretty straightforward. We've learned over the years that it's when we stop changing that things start to go wrong. We need to keep moving forward all the time because that's when we're at our best. Let me give you just a few examples. The introduction of satellite television was undoubtedly a huge step forward, but the old analog technologies could offer only limited choice and our business started to run out of steam in the mid 1990s. Our answer was another leap forward, the introduction of digital TV. With for all companies, it's about laying foundations for sustainable growth by deepening relationships with customers. And with trust in business arguably at an all-time low, that's not an opportunity that one should turn down lightly. So what does that mean for us in practice? Well, one example of our work is in sport in schools with a program called Sky Sports Living for Sport. That's a project we've been running with the Youth Sports Trust since 2003. Now, working with secondary schools, it aims to help young people be the best they can to overcome hurdles like lack of confidence or a lack of interest in the classroom. Now, I'm not going to tell you about the lad who was told to use his initiative to get to an event a few years ago and subsequently turned up in a stolen car. But I will tell you that for every one of him, there are thousands of kids like Samantha, a 15-year-old who goes to school in North Shields. Now, Sam, who was low on self-esteem and drifting uh, through life, got involved with Sky Sports Living for Sport. It gave her the chance to build her self-confidence by getting involved and to meet the swimmer Chris Cook, who'd himself overcome similar problems at school and gone on to win gold at the Commonwealth Games. Now Sam's getting a fresh start. Her teachers are seeing a big improvement, she's making new friends, and, and she's pursuing a path to her chosen career. And she's by no means alone. We've now reached roughly 27,000 pupils in 1,000 schools, each of those with a difficult story behind them, now with an increasingly powerful story to tell. And it's Sky Sports living for sport that's helped give them that second chance. And of course, just as the project gives young people a new perspective on life, so we hope it gives their parents, their families and teachers, their friends, a new perspective on Sky, giving them confidence that we're a brand they can trust. Since day one, our journey has followed a core belief in perpetual improvement, backed up by a change culture that embraces risk and opportunity. We understand that as an organization, change is good for us. It's what we enjoy most and it's what we do best. It's when we don't change enough that we're at our worst. That's why as we turn 21 this year, instead of settling into comfortable maturity, we're retaining the, re the restless enthusiasm of youth. We're changing faster and on more fronts today than at any point in our history. My greatest fear for the organization is that we lose this sense of urgency and purpose. Settling for incumbency is a path that we will never choose. And we work every day to ensure that doesn't happen. That means bringing customers a better choice of programs. It means innovating to improve the viewing experience. And it means opening up a wider opportunity as we extend our brand to new areas. But we also recognize that in the future, simple change within our own business and its immediate footprint simply won't be enough. To stay relevant, we've got to use our success to contribute broadly to the communities around us. All businesses will face this challenge. For me, that's what being a change company is all about. Constantly reinventing and renewing our business, but also growing our contribution to UK life. That's what makes Sky such an exciting and satisfying place to work, but as importantly, it's the best way to sustain success, the best way for us to make sure we're around for another 21 years and well beyond that. Thank you.